Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. The Atheist Experience is live. The show is sponsored by ACA, the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. It's September 21st, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Ashley Perrion, my co host, as Hi. always. Uh, ACA has uh, several weekly regular events that we do. We have, of course, our Sunday morning bagel shop meetings, 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located downtown at 307 West 5th Street, between Guadalupe and Lavaca, except for the very first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series in the Austin History Center, uh, the Mayor Room at the Austin History Center, and that is located at 9th and Guadalupe. However, I've just been told that uh, there's going to be, uh, we're going to have a a visitor in town, a fellow by the name of DJ Grothy, is going to be visiting Austin. DJ Grothy is with the Center for Free Inquiry, and he will be here uh, October 18th and 19th. And uh, so I think, what is that, a Friday and Saturday? Uh, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. And uh, so we're, we're going to try, I guess, that Sunday morning to get him to do a lecture that morning. Yeah. yeah we're and, to. and if we can possibly book the Austin History Center for that, then that's what is going to happen, and I guess we'll know more as the date approaches. But that, yeah. so that would be a, a bit of a deviation from uh, from our usual um, uh, first of the month lecture. But still, the first of the month lectures are are, are still happening. The, the first Sunday in October, uh, though, we are going to be meeting. It's a at, business meeting. Though. Yeah, it's a business meeting. But is it going to be at the History Center? Or is yes. it going to be okay? Yeah, so it's we'll, going to be at the History Center. So we'll still be at the History Center, but yeah. there is actually not a lecture that day on the first Sunday of October. It's going yeah. to be an ACA business meeting. And then I think the first Sunday of November, we still have James D. Yes. Lined yes. up. And uh, still haven't uh, haven't heard a topic uh, from him. I know exactly what he's going to be talking about. But, sure. uh, uh, but he has, uh, um, I believe he's affiliated with the university. Yes, and I think so. <laughs> yeah, and I've I've read he's read some he's written some editorials uh, in the Austin American Statesman, um, critical of religion that have not exactly met with kind responses. <laughs> so, but you know that's just how it goes. So, um, no more about uh, DJ Grothy's appearance. Uh, you know, like I said, as we get the information, and we'll also put stuff up on the website too when we know exactly what's going on with that. But that's the bagel shop meetings and the lectures. Uh, other stuff that we do regularly are uh, um, Godless Gamers, which takes place every Monday night, about 7 o'clock at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser, and ACA Happy Hour, which is a Thursday evening get-together at Antonio's Tex-Mex uh, near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. Starts roughly 7.30ish, but people tend to trickle in all evening, so look for the table with the little plastic uh, Darwin fish and uh, lots of loud people uh, arguing about stuff. So that's all kinds of fun. Thursday evening, ACA Happy Hour. Okay, uh, The Nonprofits is our bi-weekly internet radio show, which plays at the AtheistNetwork.com website, uh, Saturday at 2 in the afternoon, uh, and that, like I said, that is every other Saturday, and uh, it wasn't yesterday, was it? I, think I don't believe so. Yeah, I think it's this coming Saturday. I think so, yeah. All right, well, anyway, uh, so we don't know anything here, <laughs> but <laughs> check the website, uh, atheistnetwork.com, and also uh, our own website at the radio show page. Uh, Russell, who is the producer, uh, has a schedule of upcoming events. So that show, of course, is hosted by Jeff D. and Vic Farrow and uh, just random guests, whoever turns up that day. Uh, just 90 minutes of news analysis and uh, just a fun discussion about this, that, and the other, and there is a live interactive chat room feature uh, with the show. So it's Nonprofits with Jeff D. every other Saturday at 2 at either atheistnetwork.com or you can just go straight to our website, uh, to the radio show page. Russell has provided a link directly to the live feed. It's, a, it's an MP3 stream, and you can hear it that way, plus about the last half dozen or so episodes. Okay, uh, the University Atheists and Agnostics, as I understand, are back in business. Um, it is the fall semester, and, uh, well... Uh, as soon as Steve finds it <laughs> in the titles, uh, their, their meetings are every Friday afternoon. I remember now, Friday afternoons at 4 in Garrison 200. That's it. Yeah, I got it right. Garrison 200 meetings, Friday, 4 p.m. This is uh, first really successful uh, UT uh, Atheist Agnostics uh, student and faculty organization. And we're all really proud of them. Uh, Studentorgs.utexas.edu slash UAA is their web address. So if you are a UT student or faculty member and you're an atheist and you want to meet others, well, that's where you go, okay? So don't ask us anymore. Okay. I think that takes care of it for announcements. Uh, just to let everybody know, um, 
Uh, if this is your first time ever tuning into the show, uh, we've been here, wow, about six years or so, six and a half know, years on the air, different time slots, but we've been here for a while. A live call-in show, uh, we take calls from folks like you, uh, we're atheists and we're here to talk about why we, we don't believe in God and we don't think believing in God is a good idea and stuff like that, and you have questions, call us up. However, uh, first time viewers, newbies, uh, we do have a fact page on our website at atheist-community.org, just click on the fact Um and we have assembled there about uh, oh, a couple dozen questions that we have received over the years from various callers to the program that we've gotten many, many times. The most common questions that believers tend to ask folks like us, you know, why don't you believe in God? And what do atheists think about this? And that, moral. Yeah, and stuff like that. If we, in fact, we have an interesting uh, news item about that particular topic today. Yes, yeah. But So if you've never watched us before and you want to ask us something, check our fact first at that website because uh, we may have already answered your question. But if not, uh, we are live. And uh, unless you're watching us on Tuesday, in which case you're watching a rerun. Too bad. Uh, but I think that without further ado, we will go to the news with Ashley Perrion. What is happening in the world, sir? Okay. Speaking of fairness and morality mm -hmm. and being fair and balanced, being good, um, researchers <laughs> studying brown capuchin monkeys have found that the highly social cooperative species native to South America shows a sense of fairness. The first time such behavior has been documented in a, sp in a species other than humans. Hmm. Uh, the question of whether human, aver human aversion to unfair treatment, now shown by other primates, is an evolved behavior or the result of cultural influences, um, has intrigued scientists in recent years. Uh, new findings suggest uh, evolution may have something to do with it. Uh, it's also highly questioned about the economic and evolutionary nature of cooperation and its relationship to a species' sense of fairness, while adding yet another chapter to our understanding of primates. Yeah. Um, basically, what they're saying is it looks like a sense of fairness and uh, treating everybody equitably is something that's actually an, it's an evolutionary good thing. Yeah. It's not so, it's not a construct of society or religion or well, yeah. Or what it like is that. is um, these are evolved behaviors. Yes. And in fact, this uh, this. The results of these, this study, this interesting study, seems to you know reinforce you know what I've been talking about the last few weeks, where you have um, you know the reason our species, Homo sapiens, are cooperative, and the reason we have the, the morals that we do, just had to do with the way we developed yeah. biologically, right? We grew big brains, we learned to communicate. Yeah. When we communicated, we learned to cooperate, and yeah. when we learned to cooperate, we figured out that was the best way for our species to survive. Yeah. So, I think the basic instinct. Uh, towards what we consider to be moral behavior is an evolved uh, behavior. Yes. Now, it is culture then will refine that, right? Of course, I mean, it, will, it, is, it will clean it up. And, cultures, and we take those it. and we, we organize but, them into laws. Yeah. You know, so, so it is, I mean, it, it is a little bit, a bit of both, but of course you had the evolved behavior first and then as we developed our civilizations and culture, we then refined, yeah. you know, what, to, what the yeah. morals were. We, we, we codified them, yeah, basically. exactly. It's an interesting experiment. Basically it, what they did was they had these monkeys, right? And they yeah. would like do little reward and... Yeah, they basically and, had them go out and get, um, uh, it was a granite rock, they said. Yeah. Go collect this rock, bring it back, give it back to the researcher. And when you do that in less than a minute, then you get a treat. Mm-hmm. And basically, I had two different kinds of treat. One was better than the other. And they would kind of notice that when they started giving the lesser treat for the same amount of work or for no work, then they would basically start having fits. Yeah, the monkeys were like, hey. Saying, yeah, know. why is it that I'm getting this piece of garbage here when the other one got the grapes? For the same amount of work. For the same work. Yeah. Exactly. And so they'd start having fits and not accepting it and yeah. throwing it back at the research and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so yeah it's very interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, and there were even... Um, Instances where, you know, it, uh, like one, one you know, question that you could raise about the study is, well, how do we know that that's like a sense of fairness? It could just be a sense of, you know, they're, they're, uh, a sense of greed or just yes. a sense of wanting it. And, uh, and I think uh, one, of the, one of the researchers I heard interviewed on television said, you know, even, the monkeys were even perfectly will willing to accept, you know, the less tasty treat. You know, which I think was a cucumber and not yeah. the grape. They were still, they were perfectly willing to accept the less tasty treat as long as all the other monkeys got exactly, exactly. the same treat as the same as time. As soon the other ones started getting grapes, yeah. then a lot of them started having problems with that. Yeah. It's like, so. you know, you, think it's, you, you would think that the complaining monkey just wanted the yummy grape. But yeah. if you went back and gave, you know, the other monkey a cu cucumber again, 
the complaining monkey was just fine with that. Yeah. You could have given him the grape, but you know, so so it really so that seems to indicate that it really is more about equal treatment for equal work. Yeah. And that these capuchins have a, a concept of that, which is remarkable. Yeah. 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 Yeah, basically fairness and even culture and such is not uh, yeah. just a human thing. Um, they've actually done a lot of different monkey, monkey cultures like orangutans and... Bonobos. Uh, bonobos, uh, yeah. actual chimpanzees have a strong mm -hmm. sense of culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they measured something like, slightly off topic, but still going on to the same idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there were 39 distinct ba behaviors tied to mating, eating, grooming, and so on. Um, that basically shows that you know, different tribes of chimps will, will behave differently. Mm -hmm. Um, basically showing that yeah they have a they have a learned culture you yeah know, that's <laughs> right that's, they're, so they're not just you know dumb and they animals. probably don't have religion so probably yeah. not yeah they, so, so yeah so there's there, there's no real big mystery as to as to why we have morals and and you know it's very easy you know yeah. cooperative behavior is uh, works better than destructive behavior uncooperative behavior exactly you know? uh, when you have when you are a social species right. Yeah. You know, sharks don't have cooperative behavior because exactly. they're not a social species. They're all, you know, these loners that go and do their thing. Exactly. Um, but we aren't. We're social. And so um, that yeah. is, that is we just, so we just evolved that way. We evolved to work yeah. together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Yes. So we are not alone. That's right. Okay. And we will have a capuchin monkey on the show. Next. No, we won't. <laughs> right. To explain to talk their about, version yes, of culture. Yes, yeah. um, okay, this is a little bit closer to home. Abilene, Texas. Abilene. Uh, an Abilene family is fighting against the Pledge of Allegiance over the phrase under God. In February, an 11-year-old girl refused to say the pledge with the phrase in class. A substitute teacher told the girl she'd no right to live in America. Uh, the so we did get that substitute fired, or uh, they don't say anything sucked. about here. But that yeah. that is such a I think strong that's thing. Step that, number one, exactly, you know. exactly. Um, telling an eleven-year-old that, that you have no right to live in this country yeah. is it, it, yeah. that that's not Makes, good. Yeah, <laughs> word a hole comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah, when you, yeah, yeah. The suit seeks no monetary damage, but does seek removing uh, "In God We Trust" from the money to rewrite the Pledge of Allegiance without the phrase "Under God." And to forbid teaching theology in public schools, and uh, basically, is referencing back to Senate Bill 83 went into effect September 1st, which mandates that public schools have the pledge to the United States and Texas flags and a moment of silence every day in schools. We've been talking about this, or you know, I've been I haven't joined in. Yeah, there's online. been a lot of discussion about this on on our mailing list. Yeah, on our discussion list, kind and of blew um, up in the last couple of days. Yeah, and um, you know, it's I I have to. Agree, I think, with the sentiment that uh, to to compel someone to recite a memorized pledge seems to be inconsistent with the very concept of having a free nation. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, patriotism is all like well and good, and it's a great thing. Oh, definitely. And, and um, you know, having you know, loving your country and having good reasons to do so is is one of the greatest feelings you can have. Yeah. Yeah. But. The problem that, you know, the, the thing that the problem I always had with, like, the pledge, and it wasn't really so much the under God thing, although I think that that is clearly unconstitutional, but it's just, you know, because I remember from, from my school days, it's this thing, you'd get up, right, and you'd do it. Exactly. It was just this rote thing that you memorized yeah. every day, and just the, the act of doing it mechanically like that yeah. just kind of stripped it of meaning. I mean, this exactly. you, stand, you do it. You do that. Okay, so anyway, know. you know, and you go back to whatever you're doing before yeah. class, and it just the the reciting of it, the compulsory, you know, litany, yeah, um, meant that the pledge just became this empty, exactly, uh, you know, the thing, and I, and it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be. Yeah. I mean, a pledge should be a thing that should fill you with patriotic fervor, but you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and kids, you know, it's like now if they were willing to, I'm against having it mandatory. Yeah, just period. Um, but I, I would think that it would be good if they had, you know, part of the socials class or the history class or something like that, talking about the pledge, looking at it in depth. What are you actually saying? Yeah. Outside of just, you know, these couple dozen words strung together, you know, what, what are you actually saying in that instance? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, talk and about what good. it means. And that would be good. And so it was yeah. very interesting. Actually. What is a republic? Um, yeah. I, I, I'm not too sure, but I think I got chewed out pretty badly on the email list. Because <laughs> um, I went through and I, and I was trying to find out, you know, I mean, I looked through the pledge and I looked through what other people had said, mm -hmm. and I just was trying to find out, you know, what exactly is patriotism versus nationalism, um, and and that yeah. kind of thing. And I was just, you know, I looked it's these things up and I wrote yeah. it down, and 
And like I said, I was going through that, just trying to find out what is pledging allegiance to something. You know, according to the dictionary, at least, you know, what does it actually mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it was an interesting discussion to mm -hmm. to just look at it a little bit more in depth than just a you know, well, you know, you're proud to be an American, therefore you say the pledge. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Not if you want to take again the very strict definitions of what pledging allegiance to you know something mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Does that necessarily, and, and basically the, the thing that went on on it was, do you have to support the government? As in, if you don't support the, what the government's doing, should you say the pledge? And, uh, you know, is a pledge pledging to the government or is it pledging to the country? Yeah, See, that's a big difference. difference. Exactly. There's exactly. a lot of us who love our country who, don't, who aren't terribly happy with our government. Exactly. And, um, you know. And actually uh, the distinction was made, I think, again, Technical detail, but patriotism, I think they were saying, was pledging allegiance to the country and its authority. So yeah. technically, and I if you don't, don't like that. According, yeah. to, according to that definition, <coughs> if you don't agree with the war mm. in Iraq and you know whatever our current administration is doing, mm. you are not technically a patriot. Now you could and that's be BS. You and could that's be just, a national, yeah, and you could be nationalist. Mm. Because that no that no see because I don't I don't I disagree I think I think I think exactly the opposite is the case I think nationalism is where you take the view of you know my country uber allis right and yeah. it's sort of uh, you know and, and whatever it does you know right or wrong right and and that's just not no but, but patriotism is just like loving being American loving living here yeah. loving what this country you know has done for you loving the opportunities that you get loving yeah. the freedoms that you enjoy under the Constitution you know. Yeah. Uh, I think I think patriotism is about loving the country. I think nationalism is about just being this partisan, um, you know, yeah. a flag waver who, you know, no yeah. matter what it is we're doing, you're just sort of like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, America right or wrong. That's you know. So yeah. I, yeah. and I and, so, and, and again, I don't like, and that seems to be the climate that has developed, yeah. you know, in the sort of this post nine yeah, eleven, exactly. post Iraq war, exactly. um, uh, you know, neocon uh, world that we're yeah. living in, which is you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think that, I think that runs contrary to the principles of America. I think America is all about, you know, who, Thomas Jefferson, another great, you can always count on him for an awesome quote, said something like, when, when the people fear the government, that's tyranny. When the government fears the people, that's liberty. <laughs> okay. That's and you know, <laughs> and so that's that's what uh, you know. The, the latter is what we need to have. You know, yeah. I mean, the, the what Was the people in Washington D.C. need to remember that they don't that they that we don't that we're not under them. Okay, yeah. they work for us. We tell yeah. them what to do. Yeah, they don't tell us what to do. We tell them what to do. Yeah. that's what civic government is all about. Yeah. Okay, and I don't know. I think the current administration has lost its way in a lot of that, but that's just my yeah. opinion. You know, we just not yeah. a, not a big political show. Some people might disagree, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. So now the whole, so to me, I think it's the rote memorization of all of this is, is more exactly. a problem than the religious, uh, connotations. And I think we had somebody on our mailing list also say that, uh, what kids now have, you can't even, you're not even allowed to stay seated. You don't have to recite the pledge, but you, but you, st you have to stand at the very least. You really? can't remain sitting. At least this Didn't is, see anything about that. this is what one teacher, I think I read one teacher on our mailing list said something like that, but, um, she said, you know, my whole, in fact, nobody in my class even does recite it, but, but they've got to stand. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I was like, now that's, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. If you can't even remain seated, yeah. I, think, uh, I think that's a civil rights violation. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> anyway. But, uh, but yeah, this will be interesting to see what happens with that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the biggest problem here is just telling that, telling an 11-year-old girl in class that you have no right yeah. to live in this country because you don't want to say it with under God. Well, yeah, but you know that is just typical that's, of the arrogance. That's of, absolutely horrible. Yeah, 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 but that's again, that's typical of the arrogance that uh, you know the religious community you know hits anyone with that yeah. you know doesn't toe the line. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. okay, yeah, just like uh, at the uh, at the state uh, board of education textbook hearings a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago, where there was this one this group of very aggressive creationists you know, affiliated with Discovery Institute, there was a Baptist minister. Whom they had actually been in contact with prior to the hearings, uh, I guess to see kind of you know quo vadis, right? And uh, he came in and he spoke in favor of not introducing ID into school textbooks, yeah. intelligent design, instead keeping science education, you know, correct, right? Yeah. 
And after he got up and did his testimony, apparently they, four of them accosted him in the hall and really just gave him a tongue lashing. And one of them called him a nasty name and, you know, slapped him on the back and kind of like a mock friendly way. Exactly. That was not, but, yeah. But it was still, you know, intimidation and, uh, yeah. you know, definite hostility when, you know, the, when he wouldn't toe the line. You know, they have, the, yeah. they have this idea that there's one proper way to be Christian. Exactly. And uh, so, so, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Okay. Yeah, that's fundamentalism. You know, it's, it's all... Yeah, this is our way of thinking, and if you're not going to follow this exactly, mm -hmm. then get out of our way. Mm -hmm. And now for something completely different. <laughs> okay. Outraged <laughs> Christians, this is in England. Mm -hmm. um, outraged Christians have called for a novel depicting Jesus as a foul-mouthed, promiscuous, pot-smoking youth <laughs> to be banned from shelves of a local bookshop. This week, the utterly, utterly private and confidential teenage diary of Jesus by cult author Paul Murphy went on sale at Autiker's Bookshop, uh, which is again in uh, <laughs> b b b the Isle of Man. Um, oh, all right. Mr. Murphy's account of Jesus' adolescent years is vastly different from the Bible, portraying him as a typically confused teenager. Uh, in the diaries, <laughs> Jesus calls the Virgin Mary a frigid and... <laughs> it's 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 midday, so ah, all right. um, and describes his experiences of taking marijuana and LSD and having sex with Mary Magdalene. Yikes! Uh, Mr. Murphy of West Camel believes mo believes most people will not take offense, <laughs> and is a fierce defender of free speech. Um, but church leaders have condemned the book as blasphemous and threatened to boycott the store. Mm. <laughs> no kidding. Well, you know now. Um, they have a right to be offended by that, and they have a right to call course. for a boycott, and they have, you know that's fine. Yeah, you know. yeah. It's all um, free expression both ways. Yeah. He, it does seem like, it does seem like, just to play angel's advocate here for a second, that, <laughs> you know, I mean, why, I mean, to write something that, that that's that deliberately that, inflammatory. That, exactly. If you're not exactly. trying to bait. Not them. trying to press If you're not buttons. trying to, trying to bait Christians. Yeah. You yeah. know, it seems like that is part of you, you know, watch what I can, you know, <laughs> that kind of yeah. seems to be it. You know, it's sort of like, yeah. hmm. And basically yeah. his stance is, I do not think that people who pick up this book will be offended by it. I think the people who will find it offensive will not pick it up in the first place. I'm sure God has a sense of... <laughs> like, yeah, that's, a, that's anyway, true. <laughs> my favorite line in the like, story, uh, I'm sure God has a sense of humor. How else do you explain the Welsh? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. If one looks past the surface of the book... Uh, makes pointed <sighs> remarks about religious intolerance, holy wars, blind faith in leaders, even the Gulf War. And to be frank, I have used the lowest common denominator to make such and to make some sincere comments. Hmm. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, it, it could be one of those thought provoking books, but definitely a hair on the flammable side. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is a tinder box wrapped in oily rags. You, yeah, know. you could draw like a comparison to something like life of Brian. Yeah. You could say, now was that made just to be inflammatory? And I don't yeah. know that it was. I mean, cause if you watch life of Brian, you know, it isn't, you know, Christians, of course, were phenomenally offended by that. Yeah. And uh, picketed it and all the rest. Um, but if you really watch Life of Brian, it, it isn't a blasphemous movie no. so much. It is it is an extremely heretical movie. Yeah. And that you, what you have Brian saying is, don't, you don't need leaders. Don't tell, yeah. you know, think for yourselves. Exactly. Tell people what to do. You know, don't, you, you don't, don't tell people, you know, don't tell people what to do. Don't let people tell you what to do. Yeah. Think for yourselves. You know, you've got to work it out for yourself. That's yeah. his whole message, which of course the church doesn't like because the church of wants course. you to, you know, uh, you know, yeah. follow the teachings and, and, of course. and especially the Catholic church, you know, they want their authority, you know, to be, to be very strong. And so in that sense, it's heretical. Um, but I don't, you know. But you don't really see the movie Life of Brian, uh, you know, hitting Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's as a they kind of skirt that issue because he never claims to be a prophet. He never yeah. claims to be God. I'm yeah. not the person you think I am. Yeah, give it up. You know, and it's all about and just so, sort of this mindlessness of blind followers. Exactly. And um, and and so it's it certainly does it certainly does mock followers. Of course, of course. Um. But you never. But the movie never once I, it doesn't you know attacks Jesus or no. tries to present Jesus in an unflattering light. No, no, no. Um, you know, so I, you could probably make the argument that a book is like, oh, I'm gonna write a book where Jesus is you know s smoking, <laughs> smoking pot and banging pot, chicks yeah. and stuff. It's like, you know, yeah. that could be more like you know just exactly. knowing you, you can't write something like that and not, not know yeah, exactly. that it's gonna be inflammatory. Exactly. And, um, exactly. So. 
So it's probably so he's his motives are probably to to get this kind of attention. Yeah, yeah. So but anyway, it, it would still be a fun read, though. I think uh, it could be it could be funny. <laughs> at I least mean, at least the novelty of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. But but yeah. But, but well, he's dead right. Anybody who would bother to pick it up wouldn't exactly. be offended by it. Exactly. And anybody who would be offended by it wouldn't wouldn't pick it up. So, exactly. So that is kind of a self fulfilling statement yeah. there. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and throw the phone line up on the screen. Um, I think four seven seven two two eight eight is number to call us live. Um, I don't think that I have any other, uh, only to say, uh, that our, we did get some very good emails, a couple of very good emails last oh, week, yes. uh, about our coverage of the SBOE textbook hearings, and thanks a lot to those writers, I'm gonna, I, I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I do mean to put those letters up on our, our, uh, website, on the, uh, TV feedback page, but, um, if you don't manage to catch us, uh, on, on the phone lines, uh, which can happen. We get tons of calls every Sunday. Uh, people always end up waiting, and at the end of the show, there's always at least one or two people still hanging on. Uh, there is our viewer feedback email address, tv at atheist-community.org. If you have questions or feedback, um, uh, we answer all the emails that we get, and uh, so the best ones, I'll bring them on the air, and we'll answer, we'll talk about them on the air, and then, of course, uh, really good ones we'll put up on a web, the web page and you know, for everyone's entertainment. But, let's see, I think it's time to take callers. We've got one guy who's been holding for a long time, and we have a couple other people lined up, so we'll just go down the list. Yo, Josh. How's it going? Just fine. What's going on? Uh, yeah, I just want to know what y'all thought about uh, prolific figures in music such as Bob Marley, and if you think that their power was through their grace of God, or if it was just for their... Uh, you know, political statements or what? I'm not coming from a standpoint of yeah. uh, faith or anything. Not, not at all. Just yeah. want to know what you thought. Yeah. Well, um, I know that um, any yeah. artist who is who is profoundly religious is going to be inspired by their their beliefs to to be creative in in their field. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that no. uh, I, I think that you know, Bob Marley was very inspired by his beliefs. And, you know, to create the music that he created, uh, John Coltrane uh, went through a very religious phase and, and recorded his best album. Well, I'm not I'm talking like, about how what inspired them, how many people they inspired. How many people they inspired? Like, how many people, how many people now, well, not many people really pay attention to what Bob Marley really says, but yeah. how many people he really affected through his immense faith? Well, it, you're right. I think that some people... Mm -hmm. it's, and how many people are you affecting? Well, I don't know. I mean, we're not. We're just here to. Uh, we're, yeah, we're here to talk to folks, and we're here to engage people in discussion. And um, you know, we're not. We don't do the show with this whole pretentious attitude of, oh, we're going to affect the world. Of course. Um, yeah, but um, pot smokers unite. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's all up to people who listen to stuff and yeah. and, and do their thing. You yeah. know, and you know, either you're go either you're going to take from it what you get out of it, or you're going to listen exactly to what the one person was saying and just follow the message. But I think most people just interpret things the way they want to interpret them. Yeah. yeah. And I think anything that makes people think is, is going to be a good thing. Yeah. Um, again, that's why I, you know, I like being on the show is, mm -hmm. again, if people go away at least thinking about what they believe, you know, whether mm -hmm. they agree with us or not is beside the point, as long as they think critically about it for a couple minutes. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, the show has a lot of viewers, you know, and people are, but it's just like anything else, you know, where folks are going to watch us and they're going to, you know, either get mad or they're going to want to talk to us about stuff and or, or they're going to, you know, watch us and say, oh, cool, you guys are on the air. So, um, but in terms of music, yeah, I, I don't, you know, rock music is, I think, I think most people who listen to songs just kind of like the song. Yeah, and I don't know that they derive deep messages out of the music that they listen yeah. to. Um, Very rarely. I mean, when you hear like Bob Marley, like you know, "One Love," yeah. which is like this this you know very you know profound song that he wrote about let's all get together and yeah. yeah. But now you hear that's on what like a, that's that's a commercial jingle now, <laughs> and so yeah. you know yeah. it's just it's when you put something like that out in the open, people are gonna you know take it and use it. You know, they're gonna derive the message to whatever degree they see fit to derive the message. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, some people will consider that a profoundly religious and spiritual statement, and some people will consider it a very practical, yeah, we should all get along statement. And some people will say, oh, that's a great sound in tune for exactly. our, we should license that for our travel agency. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's out of your hands. You know, once you create art and you let it out into the public, it's out of your yeah. hands. Yeah. 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 Sam is on line two. Hey, you're on the air. Thank you very much. Uh, question on the monkeys. Uh, apparently, uh, they have 
what we would call values, our ethics, our morals or something. That uh, seems, that's day. a conclusion that they're reaching with yeah. the experiment. They, you know, I'm sure they're going to do more experiments. Playing the devil's advocate here. Uh, okay. If we were to believe what the Christians tell us, then I am I to assume that these monkeys are getting out of their cages and reading the Bible at night or something? Yeah. Since, you know, they tell us that all of this comes from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 the point. It's yeah. uh, you know I don't think that the monkey the monkeys go to church every Sunday. I yeah. don't think they read. If, the Bible. if they if they come up with evidence that the monkeys have one learned to read and two picked up the Bible <laughs> and three learned the learn the morality out of it. And there's a Ten Commandments monument in the lab. Exactly. Yeah. That I'd really like to see. Yeah. So. I would too. Hey, we get we get monkey for president. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which might be an improvement. I do have one serious question for you, and I've, I've pondered this for a long time. This is Sam from Utah, by the way. Okay. Um, if in fact we adhere to the atheist experience. What was Mary? She apparently was not the mother of God then. She was what? A young lady that got pregnant out of wedlock? Um that could be the case. Uh so, you know I yeah, I have to. I have to admit, I ha I don't. I, I haven't exactly lain awake nights poring over this particular question. <laughs> but uh, you know, she could have. Uh, you know, assuming, assuming, well, uh, obviously wasn't for the atheist. sake of argument that uh, that uh, Jesus was a real man and and that you know Mary was his mother and you know it could have it could have been Joseph's child or it could have been another man's child and Mary yeah. was like, uh oh, um, yeah. honey, uh, <laughs> it's God. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, she could have. Uh, she could have had the baby out of wedlock with Joseph, but before the two of them were married, which yeah. would have been a no-no back then. So they made that. Who knows? Who cares? It's it's just uh, I I don't know about detailing the finer points of of a myth and is is all that crucial. But yeah, yeah. I, I was just curious, you know, <clears throat> yeah. years ago, not in this day and age, it's much more accessible. Mm -hmm. But many years ago, we would have called someone like that a young lady with maybe poor values, poor morals. And if that, in fact, is the case, we've got, what, millions, billions of people that every week are going to church and paying homage to a girl that got pregnant before marriage. <laughs> am, I, am I correct on this, or have I yeah. something in all of this? Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> one of those little parts that they usually don't, you know, yeah. highlight all that much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it, when you look at the, I think, the original text, you know, and, and um, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, Mary is never really identified as a virgin. I think yeah, the phrase is young, young maid. Young woman. Yeah, young woman. Um, which could mean virgin, but it doesn't exactly translate to that. Yeah. Um, so the whole, I think, notion of the virgin birth, I think is rooted in sort of wishful thinking and a bit of a mistranslation. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the early days when, you know, all the ecclesiastical authorities were putting together the Bible yeah. and to try and decide what they wanted the Bible to say. But then again, a virgin birth also, it's, there are lots and lots of other religions and religions that predate Christianity that have the virgin birth in them. Right, like Mithras. And so, again, they, they may very well have, just, you know, cribbed from that. Yeah, well, yeah. so um, any number of Mistranslation sources. plus wishful thinking plus, hey, Mithra did it, so why don't we? Mm. So. Hey, Utah loves your program. Thank you. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for calling. Okay. Uh, Fred on three, I believe, is waiting. Hey, you're on the air. I just wanted to say three cheers for you, Martin, for uh, thank you. your position on the pledge. I've always felt the compelled pledge was offensive mm -hmm. and inconsistent with the freedoms of this country. Mm -hmm. And um, I was uh, dismayed by atheists who would say that, well, the pledge would be fine with me if they just take the words God out of it. Um, I always thought the pledge itself, uh, the compulsory pledge, was uh, more offensive than the words God in it. And I think that uh, someone like Ashcroft, uh, who can quickly erode our basic freedoms, if we allow that to happen or if we don't stand up against mm -hmm. uh, compulsory pledges, we may find that there's a, a back door into taking away the rights of atheists. Um, mm. Or anyone who doesn't, who isn't a part of the mainstream a religious community. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, it's like, remember, the, with the, like the whole Judge Roy Moore flap, you know, this, the, the Ten Commandments monument isn't merely, you know, an affront to atheists. It's, you know, anyone who doesn't follow the Judeo-Christian tradition. If you're Hindu, if you're Muslim, if you're Wiccan, if you uh, belong to any other faith tradition, and there are something like 2,000 of them practicing in America, yeah. um, you are essentially left out I mean, to, to put a monument up in a government building to one particular religion's sectarian rules uh, is basically a statement saying, uh, if you aren't part of this group that, that uh, 
you know, then you are then you are out of the mainstream. You do not get you are not looked upon equally under the law. That is the statement that's being made by that monument. And it's not, it's, so it's, it, the rights of atheists, yes, but it's also just anyone who isn't a Judeo-Christian. And I think in when you get right down to it, anyone who isn't a conservative Protestant Christian either. Um, White conservative Protestant Christian. Well, because, uh, you know, there are a lot of liberal Christians who, uh, you know, don't agree with um, things, for example, like having Ten Commandments monuments uh, up in public buildings, they don't agree with putting things like intelligent design in biology textbooks to to uh, to try to combat evolution, and the conservative Protestant Christians who uh, are um, who are promoting those ideas look with disdain upon those other Christians and and say, you know, you're not you're not a true Christian. They give them that, that whole line, and there's this whole sort of conflict between these two groups. Um, you know, I gave earlier the example of the the Baptist minister at. Um, at the, the, the SBOE hearings. Um, but you also have, if you read, for example, like the writings and the literature of the intelligent design proponents, they talk about people who believe in God and evolution. They call them theistic evolutionists, and they treat them with real contempt. They, they treat them like they're traitors to the faith and um, you know, should be ashamed of themselves and what have you. So it's, it, it, it's not, it, it is being pared down to one particular interpretation of Christianity and one particular way of practicing Christianity that I think the religion, what, what, when we think of the religious right and who those people represent, that's what they're going for. Um, well, I, uh, the question I have is perhaps you guys or maybe your listeners would, would know, is there <clears throat> something in the Constitution that protects us from having to observe a compulsory pledge, whether it has God in it or not? Um, I'll have to, you know, I've got my, I've got my constitution right here. I'll have to okay. go through it again and no, you know, look don't it think over. I've but ever heard of anything like that? I don't. I mean, I mean can, I, I'm sure you could take certain, certain amendments and such, and you know, twist them in such a way that you could interpret it that you shouldn't be pledging, you know, mandatory pledge. Well, but, uh, but I don't think you know. Amendment 26 is, you know, thou shalt not pledge. Or something. <laughs> well, no, Amendment 26 has to do with, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, giving 18-year-olds the right to vote. Okay. Well. Um, but, uh, no, the, well, the First Amendment, where it talks about abridging the freedom of speech. Now, you could probably make an argument that compelling someone to say, to re- do something like recite the pledge, would constitute abridging their freedom of speech because you are denying them the right not, not to say speak. it if they don't want to. Yeah. And so that could be thought of as a way of abridging the freedom of speech. So you could probably make a First Amendment argument, you know, if, if you were somebody who didn't want to, you yeah. didn't want to have your kid, you know, mandatorily standing up exactly. every morning and reciting the pledge, you could probably make, uh, you can make an argument based upon that. Yeah. I think that's really all you got um, in that regard. Um, so, yeah, that's the best I can tell you right now. Maybe someone who knows uh, yeah. the constitutional law better will call the show. and you know that mandatory recital is has always been a bigger issue with me than under God. I mean, under God mm-hmm. is a technicality type thing in it, but but having everybody be pretty much forced to say it, and you can opt out if you want to. Yeah. Um, it's... No, I, well, it's I don't, I don't the, like saying the, that you have, to, you have to pledge allegiance to the government when you're, you know, in third yeah. grade. Well, and you know, it's just, it's a thing that you, it, you should feel patriotic when you're saying it. Yeah. You should feel proud to say it. You should want to say it and, and be like, wow, I'm saying this out of my deep abiding love for my country. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the act of making it a daily road exercise exactly. strips that meaning yeah. away. Yeah. You know, and when they don't thing. really give you all that much instruction on what you're actually saying. Yeah. You know, why is it that you should pledge to this country? What makes America great, you know, over all the other countries? And why would you want to pledge to it? And, mm-hmm. and that time thing, it's just, okay, you know, everybody, it's, it's yeah, let's 9, have better it's 9 civics education. everybody gets to, you know, stand yeah. up and say this now. Let's have better civics yeah. education. Let's yeah. have better history education. Exactly. Uh, you know, let's, let's educate kids on how the political process works. Yeah. You know, and why it is that our government works for us and not vice versa. Exactly. You know. Exactly. That's... All right. All anything, right. Thank you. Anything else? Thanks. Bye. Yeah, that's a good call. Okay. Uh, oh, it's our pal Russell on one. Let's see what he has to say. Russell. Hi. How you doing? Hey. I wanted to read you something funny that I saw this week uh, regarding the monkey study. Ah. Um, some, somebody posted that this just totally destroys C.S. Lewis's argument because he's the guy who said that the best reason to believe in God is... Uh, that if there wasn't a God, then there would be no standard for having any basis for morals. Mm-hmm. 
And then he goes on to say, but if other primates also exist and uh, also exhibit an innate understanding of fairness, then I only see two possible explanations. Either we have inherited our own sense of fairness from our primate ancestors, or God is deeply concerned with the moral behavior of capuchin monkeys. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if the latter, the then I suppose that God would have to incarnate himself in the body of a monkey, be born of a female capuchin who hasn't had <laughs> sexual relations with an alpha male, grow up to be an example of the, to the other monkeys of his tribe on how to properly live life, and he uh -huh. will be executed by those in his own tribe. <laughs> and, and then eventually God will return and gather up all believing monkeys dead or alive and airlift them to his private zoo where they will have giant bananas and low hanging limbs and vines and live in happiness forever and ever. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's beautiful. Where did you find that? Oh, it's on the Motley Fool Atheist board. Oh, that's no. beautiful. That is yeah. great. I think, yeah, that's certainly one for uh, yeah, the ages. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Anyway, uh, good show. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Um, are nonprofits on this coming Saturday? Yes, this Saturday. All right, okay. so everybody tune into that. Thanks, Russell. All right, thanks. see Talk ya. to you soon. Okay, that number to call us live. There it is, right there. Four seven seven two two eight eight. Straighten us out on you know if you think that uh, we're up here, uh, and uh, you don't agree with us, and or you want to ask us questions about stuff, uh, feel free. Give us a call. On line two, we have Daniel. Is that just waiting? All right. Daniel. Hi. Oh, we, Hi. Lost, we lost him. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, will we uh, try to call back if you can. And uh, now we have somebody holding on one that uh, we're going to look for. We're going to just get those names. Okay. So, while the names are coming in from the control room, um, yeah, I'm getting back to, oh, well. Let's just see here. Here they come. So we're not gonna. All right, Daniel is back now. No, he's not. But oh, he's not. That's a different. Okay, Scott, we're now talking to. All right. Okay. Now we got it organized. Hey, you're on the air. Hello. You there? You got a faggot, 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 faggot. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint you. You'll have to look <laughs> elsewhere. Um. Let's see. I would try the forum. Find What's next? Okay. Oh, we don't. Have... Okay, we're waiting. All righty. Okay. So we're um, slow today. Yeah. Call us up. Yell at us. Yeah. The um the whole thing about uh, cooperative behavior. Yeah. Um, you can actually see a progression of it in the fossil record with, in terms of, what sort of artifacts, different early hominid groups had. Yeah. And um, the larger the brain case, you know, the more you're able to. Again, you develop speech, you develop reasoning capacities, you develop the ability to think. In terms of okay, what can I now do with this other guy? You know, maybe if we work together, we can bring down the bigger game. Yeah. Maybe if we, uh, you know, um, yeah. which is formed what, tribes, then we could care yeah. for our, we could protect our young better. Which is what uh, confused me in the actual article. They go on to say, now, you know, did cooperative is being fair? Did that come from being cooperative, uh -huh. or did cooperative behavior evolve from being fair? You know, which came first, basically. And saying that, you know, there really is no need to be social and be fair and be, you know, altruistic and cooperative and stuff like that. And again, maybe maybe I'm reading the article wrong or something or missing, you know, some important point. But mm -hmm. when you have a social species, being fair and working, you know, being cooperative is there, there, there are obvious benefits to that. Mm -hmm. Again, just, you know, going back to, you know, early man. Yeah, you get five people together, you can bring down a woolly mammoth a lot easier than if you go out there on your own with a stick. Yeah. Um, oh, you, you can just dig for grubs, basically. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so there are obvious benefits to you know having lots of lots of the same thing working together towards a common end. Yeah. You can achieve it much. And easier. in order to do that, you have to develop language, of course, which is what uh, you know Homo yeah. sapiens were able to do. Yeah. Um, for example, you had um, a, a a species that preceded us, which were Homo erectus. Yeah. Were physically they were massive. You know, they were yeah. about six feet tall. They were very big, strong, but tiny little brains. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they couldn't develop language. They couldn't develop reasoning capacities. Um, they couldn't talk. You know, they could basically yeah. grunt. You know, they had you know brains like the size of you know a bar of soap. Yeah. Really, nothing going on there. But but they were larger and stronger. But you know, and so just think if they had been able to match the physical size with a larger brain, enabling exactly. them to hunt. Yeah. Uh, that could have been a tremendously successful species, but you oh, know, yeah. they just weren't favored uh, by natural selection that way. Okay, we have uh, now uh, logged up a whole bunch of phones on the line, so we're just going to go first. 
Joel, I guess. All right. Hey, you're on the air. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say I'm a, I'm a devout Christian. And I guess what surprised me about watching y'all for the first time is that you're not lumping all of us into one group. I'm also very, very dedicated to the separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. And uh, listening to you talking about seeing the difference between conservative Christians and liberal Christians, that's surprising to me a little bit. Yes, well, there, there's probably a lot more. We'll surprise you in many more ways if you ever watch the show for a length of time. You know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of stereotypes about how atheists are that... Uh, just, to, just like there are a lot of stereotypes about Christians. Sure. And uh, so, uh, but yeah, you know, we recognize that um, the fundamentalist conservative Christian right does not represent all believers. Uh, they seem to think they do. Uh, uh, the and, Bible, for instance, I, I think it's a nice book, but I don't believe that it's the Word of God. Uh, mm -hmm. And as a Christian, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem working through that either. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of people that I know don't. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, that uh, that is good. What I what I always say when it, we get uh, folks like yourself who call us occasionally, and you know tell us like, yeah, well, I'm just as you know displeased with the you know arrogance and the shenanigans of the religious right as anyone else, and that's great. And uh, what I want to encourage you to do, and your like-minded friends, is you are the guys who need to let, you know, the Falwells, and um, you know the Pat Robertsons yeah. and the the Roy Moores of the country know. That, you know, hey, we're Christian too, you know, but we don't, you know, you don't speak for me. Uh, you, you know, it is not up to you to determine how I should practice my faith. It is not for you to determine, you know, what makes me a good Christian. And uh, you need to let, you need to be the guys to let them know that they don't represent all of you. All of yeah. my friends yeah. are convinced that I'm on 30 lists somewhere because I am <laughs> one of those people that write everybody. That's and good. Well, that's that's good. That's excellent. Well, good for you. So, um, yeah, we write too, but they usually don't listen. Yeah, they don't listen to us because you know we're the evil, godless, liberal atheists. <laughs> but uh, you know they, uh, but the, you know that's the you know they need to they need to be made aware of that um, you know that that you that they're not to, they they can't elect themselves demagogues. Absolutely, to the rest I, of the I am family. one of those voices out there trying to to stop that. Well, good, good, good for you. Um, so, uh, anything else you'd like to like ask us about or talk about today? That's it. All right. Well, uh, we hope you keep watching the show, and anytime you want to just quiz us on anything at all, just call us up, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Colin. All right. Good guy. Uh, Jason on two, waiting patiently. Hey, you're on the air. Faggots, 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 faggots. Dude, I mean, look, I know you're lonely, <laughs> but please. We're both taken. Sorry. Uh, who's next? Is that Michelle or Michael? Michael. Michael. Hey, you're on the air. How you doing, Martin? How you doing? We're all right. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, I would like to say that's what make that's one thing that makes this country so great because, uh, you know, people have a tendency they can practice, you know, they certain religion or whatever they believe might be, and as what you were just saying, I know some people that's in church now they claim to be Christians, mm -hmm. and they just is living they living just as wrong as anybody out here in the street. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you know that that that's what bothers me. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you're not living holy and inside of yourself, you know why? try to, you know, comment on how somebody else is living. Yeah. You know? you know you know why I think people do it? I think they do that sort of just to smooth over their own feelings of guilt about what they're doing. But they don't want to change their behaviors. Right. Um I when when I was my my ex, you know, I get into a little, you know, ex wife stories, but I don't mind because it's <laughs> fun to talk about now. Um you know, was just wild, right? Ran around on me, did you know yeah. everything, right? Uh, but she was like the Christian in the couple, and she was the one. I mean, she went to these, you know, where they talk in tongues, and she would she oh. went to these services and like Wednesday night and Sunday night and did all the rest of it. Right. And she did that, you know, just but by but but she was the one going off, and but you know, she was cheating and she was running around and she was spending my money behind my back, and when you know I didn't and like selling my belongings to make money when she you know. Yeah. And stuff like that. I mean, just just uh, completely rotten to the core. Um, but but she had this religious persona, which allowed her yeah. to think that she was better than me, and it, it, she she could justify her behavior. Yeah, you know. So she just so she. I think she did that. Um, I don't know that she didn't believe. She probably did believe. But again, this is all how when you uh, when you adopt these kinds of delusional belief systems in the first place, right? Right. You can just you know you can you can you can rationalize inconsistent things. Yeah. Okay. You can just decide not to be bothered by the fact that you are someone who runs around and does all kinds of you know bad behaviors because you know Jesus loves you anyway and he'll forgive you and you know and I go to church which makes me better than you anyway so. Yeah. So yeah, so I know exactly what that's all about. I think that's probably just a lot of people who want to put on the show of feeling pious, look at what a good Christian I am, everyone sees what a good person I am, and then they get on with their lives just like anyone else. Right. So um, 
I think I might even have something in here that is, uh, here we are. This is, a, this is kind of old. This is from like last September. Uh, this is a result of a poll. It's a guy named George Barna. He is a Christian. Poll, he runs a Christian yeah. polling organization. Like, you know, you hear the news and they say, right. oh, in a poll, you know, 85% of people think this. Well, this is a guy who runs a Christian polling organization, and he says that um, he can't find Christianity transforming lives. This is about a year ago. He said, his data undercuts some of the core beliefs that should, by definition, set evangelicals apart from their more liberal brethren. Findings of his poll show, for example, that. Okay, he says... The divorce rate is no different for born-again Christians than for those who do not consider themselves religious. He says only a minority of born-again adults, 44%, and a tiny proportion of born-again teenagers, 9%, are certain that absolute moral truth exists. He says most Christians' votes are influenced more by economic self-interest than by spiritual and moral values. And he says desiring to have a close personal relationship with God, which is what a lot of Christians who call this show tell us being a Christian is all about, he says that ranks sixth among the 21 life goals tested among born-again Christians, <laughs> trailing such desires as living a comfortable lifestyle. <laughs> so, you know, it's... So this is just kind of how it is, you know? <laughs> all right. Well, y'all have a good thing going, man. Well, thanks. So call us anytime, time, all right? Bye. Take care. Uh, Chris is on line one. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, man. Uh, I just wanted to kind of say sorry about your actual life, man. It sounds like kind of a bitch to me. Oh, well, yeah, she were. <laughs> But that's a long time ago, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, she's got to live with being herself, so I'm not bothered by that anymore. Anyway, what's up? Well, uh, what you were telling me was kind of making me think about some people I know. You know, I know a lot of uh, Christians, and they kind of they kind of use that, that faith as kind of a crutch to lean on. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these people are hypocritical. I mean, I think I live as good a life as, you know, anybody you'll find, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a religious person. I don't consider myself religious, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh... I think these people are really hypocritical. I mean, like, also, like, you know, look at look at conservative policy on the death penalty, right? I mean, aren't these, mm -hmm. aren't these the same people that said let the one, one uh, without sin cast the first stone? Yeah. I mean, these are some of the these are some of the hardline proponents of the death penalty, right? Yeah, and they're they're also like a strong strongly anti-abortion but pro-death penalty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's it's what interesting, interesting little uh, double standard there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah they, you're right. You know, they, they pick and choose, you know. They want to. They, they, it's a double standard. You're right. Yeah. You're quite right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, I've known, uh, I've known uh, Mormon people, you know, and I, I, I used to date this girl, and her dad was kind of a dick, but, you know, he kind of, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he kind of he used his uh, religion, though, as like a crutch, though. He, was, he, you know, he, was, he wasn't that good of a guy, but he still kind of thought he was better than other people because yeah, of that. Because, oh, he yeah. had, because he had that exactly to, to, to prop him up with. Yeah. He could prop himself up with that. Everybody's got to have something good in their lives that they yeah. can say, well, you know, yeah, I'm not perfect. I, you know, I make mistakes, but at least, look, I'm doing good in this area. Yeah. And so, you know, religious people could say, you know, right. yeah, okay, so I messed up a couple times. But, you know, I go to church, and I'm really sorry about what I did. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so well, got something. There, there's, you know, gen yeah, sure, yeah, I'm sure there may be honest confession. And again, and oh, of course, of course remember, we're saying, not yeah, saying, and definitely. we're not saying, of course, that all Christians are this way. Of but course. we do, but you do find, you know, among the religious community, people who are there because they they they, they want the religion to prop themselves up yeah. and to just reinforce this self image that they have that oh, I'm I'm just you know I'm better than everyone yeah because I have the Lord in my life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, well, you know, but again, but they just go out and they who was the guy. Uh, this conservative, who was he? Bill Bennett. Oh yeah. The more yeah, yeah, the yeah. moralities are. What's his name? And he he would he would he would come out and and just slam people for you know their their personal lifestyles. And he was yeah. he wrote these books for kids talking about how to be moral. And he turned out that what he gambled away like he he lost like yeah. half a million dollars gambling. Yeah. Something he was. No, like, that's in like a single stint. I mean, he lost yeah, millions. He had like this career. But yeah, I mean, he would sit gambling. down and lose you know yeah. half a million dollars in a weekend. No. But um, no, he had this extended career as a loser yeah. at the tables, yeah. right? And yet he's here more lecture, and, and yet he is uh, the Bush administration's morality czar, right? Telling everybody, you know, this is you're a good person if you do this, and you're a bad person if you don't do this, and trying to tell writing books for kids, telling them what moral behaviors are. And it's a total hypocrite. Yeah, yeah. Well, got called on again, it. But then again, a, a side note. I mean, I know this is side, but yeah, uh, it depends on how you define gambling. I mean, do you just blanket statement say gambling bad? And therefore, the end of the story. If you lose half I'm, a million bucks at it, <laughs> if you got the money to spare, what's the problem? Actually, I if don't. Somebody, I, I don't know that it was all his money. To his okay, if it wasn't yeah. his money, that's something very yeah, different. Yeah, I think that. I was think even his money. I, well, no, I, I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure. I think that it was some of it were like I think he took out some loans. Yeah. Um, yeah. But hey, I mean, like if I got thrown down the you know a buck on the lottery, that's technically what's, gambling. 
Yeah, but you're, you know, it's like you've got enough sense to stop before it gets to half a million. Right? Yeah, well, <laughs> to know. him, half a million is a buck to me, maybe. I don't know. I uh, know, probably. <laughs> no, uh, trust me. I mean, you know, there are very, well, uh, very few people alive who can say that. You know? I mean, <laughs> well, guys, yeah, I gotta, I'm going to let you go here, but I just wanted to say right. in, clo- in closing that, you know, I was mainly kind of focusing on the, you know, the conservative Christians, which mm-hmm. you were talking about before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are a lot of liberals out there, and yes, they do. You know, my, my mother's a, uh, you know, devout. Lutheran, and she's she's more of a, a liberal Christian. You know, I'm sure she doesn't approve of the uh, Ten Commandments in the State House or the Fourth in the State of Pledge or the Under God in there. Yeah. Good, good. Well, we uh, we would like we would like all Christians who disagree with um, attempts to you know uh, to have government sponsorship of Christianity to write those people like Roy Moore and Jerry Falwell and John Ashcroft and and Tom DeLay and people who think that America should be a theocracy and tell him you know I'm a Christian and I don't think this should be the case and here's why. Just bombard them with letters. That's that's so, what is gonna it's gonna take hearing from other Christians who don't agree with them to make them realize that they don't speak for all Christians. Well, yeah. this kind of goes back to what I was saying about picking and choosing. You know, you have mm-hmm. these conservatives once again that think the Second Amendment should be interpreted word for word and everybody mm-hmm. can have a gun, but when it comes to the First Amendment, not endorsing state religion, that one's yeah. up for debate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Choose, you choose, yeah. 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 Choose your pet. You choose your favorite pet amendment. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man. Uh, thanks a lot for your points. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Jeff. You Great take care. We'll talk, we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you real soon. Okay, um, Thomas on two. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, Ashley. Yep. Hey, uh, when's the last time you had your ass beat, boy? Mm. Coming after you, mother. Mm. Yeah. Don't flatter yourself, punk. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So. Who's next? We're just waiting on more calls. And yeah, that's it. Great. Um, yeah, speaking of Christians, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> calling I mean, up. you know, we do. Yeah, up it does seem to be that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, guys like that, right? Think that, think that you know, it hurts us when they call and they talk like that, but it doesn't. You know, I yeah. mean, this is they—they they are demeaning themselves and they're yeah. demeaning Christianity. I mean, they're reinforcing. They're pointing out that my life is a joke. Because you know, I have nothing better to do on my Sunday morning than watch public if, access TV and call yeah. up the shows and berate the host. You know, I mean, if you guys want to keep making Christianity look bad. Okay, by by you know calling up and behaving the way you're behaving, go ahead. You know, I mean, go right ahead, do it. Um, who's next? We We're gotta, still waiting on names. We, we have like three, Christmas tree in front of us. Yeah, three lights, three <laughs> lights lit up, and uh, no names yet. So anyway, <laughs> so just want to remind everyone, uh, we have a bagel shop meeting so Sunday mornings for believers only, and uh, you can find information about that on the website. Uh, also, uh, something coming up uh, that we're doing Halloween. Yes, yes. Well, not all of us are doing, but some of, some of our folks. Uh, Karen, I think, is masterminding a, another trick or canning run. Yep. She did this last Halloween where um, we go door to door and we collect canned goods yeah. for the Austin Food Bank. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think, and, I think so. and got a ton of food uh, last year. And With so I think six we're going to. people. Yeah. There was six people so, that did ooh, it last year. Sorry and about they got, that. I want to say so, it was just over like 110 pounds of food and stuff like that. That's great. That's a lot. And so we're going to hopefully have more people going this year. And try to get out again. So uh, if you're if you're in the group and you know Karen, talk to Karen. I think that, I think she is the one masterminding that. If she's not, she'll yell over the headset and tell us so. Um, but um, okay, I think some names are starting to turn up now. So uh, let's see. who's on one? Do we know? Okay, we're still not Maybe sure. Not. <laughs> yeah. Does, does you want to go on? Okay. 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 We're trying we to make up our minds. Are you Fred? I um, I had a question about the textbook um, yes, sir. controversy. Mm-hmm. Um, the way you guys talk and the different things that you report, it, it, it seems to be a pattern of the moral watchdogs, not the way they are um, trying to censor our textbooks and, and perhaps do other things to uh, affect the way we teach. It seems to me that we're in danger of having those guys uh, just erode the quality of our education where we already trail behind a lot of countries in in the quality of science and uh, math uh, uh, people that we turn out. And in the, in the global competition where a lot of the software and computer engineers are now uh-huh. cropping up in um, other countries, uh, that would seem that we are doing disservice uh, to our kids. And I was wondering, did the erosion of uh, the education in general 
come up, or was anyone concerned about that at the uh, hearings? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Um, everybody who spoke in favor of, you know, keeping science education undiluted, right, um, mentioned this. It's like you know, it is it is difficult enough right now. Uh, the quality of education and schooling in our country is already at enough of a crisis state that we should not do students a disservice by introducing like unscientific ideas, for example, into a science curriculum, which is only going to serve to confuse them and make it harder for them to compete later on with other countries in the world that are going to be, you know, producing more PhDs. Um, we're already seeing, I mean, we are something, you pointed out that we're very low. Uh, we're very low. We're like 16th out of 17 or something in terms of science and math yeah. Yeah. education in our country. And other countries like Korea, Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. You know, they're like number one, number two. Yeah. And, and um, you know, they the more smart people <laughs> that these countries put out, the more powerful they become. Yeah. Uh, you know, the harder it's going to be. Uh, you know, and, and some of them may not decide to be friendly to us, friendly yeah. to America in the future. There could be all sorts of very, very bad ramifications for um, reducing the quality of education simply to satisfy the interests of a religious and, and political pressure group, yeah. special interest group that wants to make sure that their precious myths are enshrined in education yeah. no matter what. Um, so there was very much, all, coming all the way from you know, people like Steven Weinberg, who was a Nobel laureate, who spoke there. Uh, we had uh, students. We had a, a high school sophomore speak. He did a wonderful job. We had, um, there was a woman who was, uh, we had several theologians. And uh, there was like one woman who was also a, a graduate student at Rice in like the, the you know, um, the uh, microbiology or whatever department, you yeah. know, studying these things, but yeah. who was a Christian, but who understood separating her beliefs from science. Um, all of these folks uh, very, were very clear on bringing up the point that uh, if you dilute education, that is just, you know, the worst possible thing you can do. Uh, the reason I ask is because uh, last week when some of the uh, film uh, footage you showed, mm -hmm. uh, it reminded me a lot of the rhetoric that was used by the white during the um, uh, segregation uh, fight, hmm. uh, where they were using the Bible and other things to justify uh, the um, put down the blacks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was thinking that, uh, this is a kind of a dumb thought, but uh, that if in fact the, our education does get eroded to the point where people are uh, who want their kids to have a good future are taking them out of public schools and putting them in private. It's or homeschooling, to, yeah. It's going to be the uh, the, the um, it's going to be the privileged class, the uh, who are able to do that. The the un, the under the underdog classes are not going to be able to do it, and they're going to wind up suffering. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can turn this into like the uh, uh, the twenty first century um, civil rights fight. Well, uh, yeah, maybe maybe that would be an interesting approach to take. Right. Um, I thankfully, it was my idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, thank, the scientific community is is taking the scientific community made a mistake early on, which is that they dismissed the creationist movement as well. These are a bunch of you know religious cranks, and who cares? They're not. They didn't really understand the threat that they posed. You know, the, what the creationists were able to do was just go directly to the public. You know, because they have all these churches with thousands and thousands of people in them. And so they took the message there and began to sow a lot of distrust in science uh, among just the general public. And uh, scientists, you know, didn't foresee this coming. And so they kind of missed the boat, you know. So although, you know, science has certainly won the scientific war, um, the creationists have been winning the PR war. And so now you have centers like the, you have organizations like NCSE, National Center for Science Education, and groups like Texas Freedom Network, and uh, all sorts of different uh, organizations that are out there now uh, really stumping and doing, doing a very good job, you know, countering these attempts to undermine science education at school boards and what have you. Um, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, they kind of, uh, they, they dropped the ball initially. Now they've, they've sort of picked it, they've recovered, and now they're trying to, you know, and they've gained a lot of yardage, but, uh, you know, it's still... Still a big fight ahead, and it's a drag, you know? I mean, it's, it's, science should not have to be distracted by this nonsense. I mean, it would yeah. be so much nicer if scientists could just be allowed to work 
Okay, if biologists could just be allowed to do biology so that we can learn more things about our body to do, do things like cure deadly diseases yeah. and stuff like that and, and, you know, like find a cure for this like AIDS thing and SARS and all these viruses and, and, and stuff like that, you know, and you only do that by studying biology, by studying science, by learning more about what we are internally, you know, and if, if you're constantly being distracted by, you know, some guy doing hand waving, go, but wait, you know, this doesn't, you know, evolution doesn't explain, you know, why I have brown eyes. It seems like, oh boy, here we go again. You know, and it's just a big distraction. It's stupid. Okay. Wish it didn't have to happen, but so, you know. <laughs> so anything, anything else? No, thank All you, right. Thanks a lot for calling. Uh, to take care. Call anytime. Okay. Uh, who's next? Vince on two? Okay. Well, I'll just, I'm just going to go in order. Hey, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, I had uh, something to say about the, the thing about uh, the monument in Alabama. Yes, sir. Yeah. But before I wanted to get into that, I wanted to ask you, what do you guys know about FBU? Fact Bashers Unite! Fact oh, Bashers you, Unite! You again! Good grief. <laughs> you know, um, I understand that guy calls like just about every call in. Yeah. Uh, a, you know, a access show there is. I mean, he calls. He apparently that's all he does is watch access and call <laughs> in and, and do that. Um, all right, Darwin. Darwin. Hi, you're on the air. Is this Darwin? Yes, this is Darwin. Okay. Um, I had. Well, of course, I'm from Austin. You know, this is a pretty, it's a pretty liberal city. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to know what if the atheists had any specific view on uh, marijuana. Uh, not really. Atheist no. lack of belief in a god. Yeah. Uh, everything else that goes along with it is open for debate. Yeah. So <laughs> just like anything else, uh, there's no there's no real atheist view on marijuana use. But I mean, it's not really considered anything related to a god. Mm, no, but but, well, but, but that's right. right. So that's why that's why there's no atheist view on marijuana use because yeah. it doesn't have to do with the god question. You know, atheism yeah. is about not believing in God. So. Whether you are there are there are liberal atheists and there are conservative atheists. So I think that uh, and uh, somebody who happened to be an atheist, whatever their opinion on marijuana use hap was, would probably have a lot more to do with their political leanings than than whether or not they believed in a god. Um, would either one of y'all be willing to to admit that you do partake? I don't partake now. I went through a little teenage experimental phase, like just about everybody. You know, I didn't really like it. I didn't like it. It made me nauseous. What's up with the PVC grid? Oh, that's our backdrop. All right. Okay, so anything else? Uh, Fact Bastards Unite. Dude, whatever. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right, who's next? Juan. Juan, you're on the air. Hi. Um, good afternoon. Hey. Hey. Um, I've participated before here, and I just mm -hmm. wanted to make a comment regarding uh, what appeared today on the Sunday's paper. Uh-huh. Pat Robertson made a statement about uh, Hurricane Isabel. Oh, okay. Ooh, Who was God you, punishing this time? Cool. Have you have you <laughs> commented on the program before? Because I just no. turned on the program. And well, I mean, we remember that you know um, yeah, he had issues with September 11th. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Well, yeah, he, he thought that nothing, nothing on the paper on the, on, yeah. the, on the before the Isabel came into into land. Okay. He he said in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I command you, the storm, to go back out to sea and go away. <laughs> that's exactly. You can read it in today's paper. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. And, and I mean, but the only comment I wanted to make is, when are these people going to stop making fool of themselves, <laughs> uh, trying it's... to suspend all physical laws in their favor? Yeah, <laughs> not, um, not yet. Yeah, you know, if, if you've heard some of the calls on our show today, right? Okay, they don't ever stop making fools of themselves because that's yeah. that's what you do when you're a fool. Okay, when you're a fool, you make fools of yourself, right? I mean, yourselves, right? right I mean, right. Pat if you're, Robertson is if you're a bird, to the you fly. Club. It's yeah. speaking to people who have, uh, yeah. you know, some reasonable minds and some degree of intelligence, and and here's this man, you know. Who's a side show? Everybody that he's an idiot. Yeah, I mean, and that—that's what idiots yeah. do, right? Is they act like idiots. Okay. I that, mean, that was the only comment, and, and yeah, you know, I wanted to congratulate you on a, on a good show, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. You know, you I know, wonder what I wonder what you know. Birds fly, fish swim, and idiots act like idiots. I wonder what you know? Pat's got to say now about it. You know, not swerving <laughs> away. See, you know, see, this is. So. Yeah, I, and Did he well, not pray hard enough? My only thing is. Um, 
That's a uh, although it's beautiful though because it it does you you don't usually see him before a big event like this, you know, yeah. go out on a limb and say in the name of Jesus I command you da 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 because <laughs> you know. of course because now he is put in this position of having to explain why Jesus didn't help his favorite guy yeah. to chase this storm away yeah. right why Jesus didn't want the storm to go. Uh, so if you you know so yeah obviously if he commanded the storm in the name of Jesus to go back out to sea and the storm came in. Obviously, that must mean Jesus wanted the storm to hit and kill all those people, mustn't yeah. it? So now Pat has to deal with answering that question. But what is really funny is that I've never known him to do that before, to take to try to do like a yeah. preemptive God strike yeah. against some natural disaster. <laughs> Usually what he does is he comes he comes along after the disasters happen. The very first time I ever heard him do this, um, when I started paying attention to this kind of stuff, was after the 1989 San Francisco earthquake, mm -hmm. right? Which which obviously he said was the you know the result of you know gay people you know <laughs> clustering in San Francisco and doing what they do, and yeah. I guess they made an earthquake. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, so uh, and and he he uh, and he but he well, no I, I take that back. There was one other time he he told the city of Orlando that if they had some sort of gay pride festival. Um, oh yeah. That uh, <laughs> that they would be hit by some like, a meteor. Yeah, a meteor. And that didn't happen. So, okay, so again, maybe God approved of the Gay Pride Festival. Um, <laughs> but, of course, the most amazing thing was when both Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell got on 700 Club TV show. And they basically gave this ringing yeah. endorsement of September 11th, saying, there you go, America. See, you deserve that because yeah, you... Because of you, all your feminists yeah, and the ACLU. And, and all the gays and liberals yep. and feminists and, and the ones left wingers and... And people who aren't like us, you know, uh, yeah. this is this is this is what you get. So they gave this big, you know, the, basically the most anti-American statement you could have made two days after the attacks. Yeah, you know, and they were roundly condemned for it. Yeah. And but I, I don't I just don't understand why guys like Pat Robertson still manage to get media. You know, like the media actually goes to them when they have some question on some matter, right, pertaining to religion. Oh well, let's interview Pat Robertson, see what he has to say. The man is a clown. <laughs> He's a complete fool. Yeah. Now maybe I don't mind. I mean, I don't mind if you want to interview a complete fool. Okay, to get some opinion on you know well, what's the Christian take on this, that, or the other. You know, okay. Snicker, I mean, snicker, snicker. <laughs> I mean, if he, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it just serves to make these irrational beliefs, you know. Yeah understood for being exactly how irrational they are, okay, whatever. But, you know, the man's a sideshow, and Falwell's a sideshow. Yeah. And they should be treated like sideshows and uh, just not taken seriously anymore. But I think that's funny. I'm going to have to check that out in the paper. <laughs> um, what is, now, what is this? You? Yeah. Yeah. Stephen, okay. Uh, we take... Okay, well, but what's Stephen on line one? Well... Yeah, well, okay. Well, let's see what you have to say about that. Stephen, hi. Hey, how are you, Martin? We are well. What's going on? Well, listen, I just heard you make comments there, and I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, you're calling uh, these different individuals fools, and, you know, men can act real foolish sometimes. I make no mm -hmm. offense of that, but the book that I live by says, a fool says in his heart there is no God. Yeah, well, you know. I just want to challenge both of you. <laughs> Uh, just to, to really search that out in your own lives, because well, we've whether heard you the believe quote. it or not, it is the truth. Okay, well, it's then a, then what you yeah. need to do is present the evidence for your God, and if the evidence is compelling, we'll believe you. Okay. Yeah. Now, in terms of us, you know, I don't. I think that we are perfectly valid when someone calls our show and spouts a bunch of obscenities because they haven't got the brains to do anything else. I don't see that there's anything invalid about calling that person a fool. So I make no apology for that. Now, if you think we're foolish for not believing in your God, okay, fine. Just present us with the evidence. You know, show, well, I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm not calling you a fool myself. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're hiding behind you're the Bible. The creator quote. of the universe yeah. says you're supporting yeah. a book that says we're fools. Yeah. And and again, until there is evidence that God exists, then it's just a book, yeah. just like well, you know, Alice great, in Wonderland you know, you guys is a book. Are students of history, so. you'll find the history um, validates. The book of the Bible. It in doesn't what, refute it. In what way? It validates it. Okay, how? Well, historical evidence. You know, like, I mean, there's such as, lots of historical evidence to like, prove that what happened in the Bible is actually true. Like there's the there's the uh, ark. I mean, there's the uh, ark that Noah built, and it's actually been found on Mount Ararat. <laughs> Actually, well, no know, you guys are laughing, but you're... Yeah, you're, 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 actually, you're actually... Uh, uh, yeah. Stephen, Stephen, the Ark has been found on Mount Ararat in like 17 different places, okay? Yeah, more like 100. The Ark has been found by people who claim to have bits of wood that they then don't allow scientific labs to examine. 
The Ark has been hoaxed by people who get bits of wood and soak them in teriyaki sauce and say, <laughs> I found this on Mount Ararat. Oh, come on, you guys. The I mean, Ark has been... You know, you can, you're predisposed to be skeptics, so... Well, well why shouldn't we be? believe that it isn't true. Why shouldn't we be? I mean, when... Should when we just blindly swallow this guy who soaked his, you know, yeah. his backyard fence in teriyaki sauce? Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, why shouldn't any... All that is besides the point, you know. It's not beside the God, point. You made God a claim. God is calling each of us... You made a claim. ...to make a decision... For him, and he's even calling both of you. He loves you guys. Yeah, prove he exists. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, it's it's great that you're telling me that this guy loves me. Fine, prove he exists, and his love will mean something. Okay, but you know, until then, you know, trying to trying to call up, you know, first, okay, let's say let's say you found a, a bunch of wood on Mount Ararat. Okay, first off, and let's say it even looks like a boat. Now, how do you know that's Noah's Ark? What do you what do you expect to find? A registration papers in the glove box? <laughs> this Ark belongs to Noah. I mean, how even if you found a huge artifact on Mount Ararat, how do you know what you found is the Actually, Ark of the Bible? Actually, you know, they they've, uh, did scientific studies on the wood that's uh -huh. of that, on that Ark, and they've proven that it can't possibly exist where it's been found. And uh, they've done all the dating studies on it. I'm not going to debate that with you guys. I'm not a scientist. Yeah. What I can tell you is that yeah, God calls each of us and uh, in our own heart. Uh -huh. And he's calling both of you, too. Uh, look, this is fine. Just prove and that claim, and, and we're okay with it. Exactly. Present us with evidence. There are big differences. The Bible talks about a lot of things which we know exist. Israel, I know, exists. Jerusalem, I know, exists. There are lots of small things, or big things, in the Bible which, yes, are absolutely true. Uh, some of the people in it are based on actual people uh, that I have no argument against. But saying that, look, Israel exists and it's talked about in the Bible, and such and such person exists and they're in the Bible, therefore there must be this, you know, omniscient, you know, all-powerful, invisible man living in the sky who created the universe, that's a big leap. And you can't make that kind of a leap. Because again, Alice in Wonderland talks about England. That exists. Rabbits exists. Decks of cards exist. But you can't prove, but you can't extrapolate from that all the other strange things that they got going on in that world. Just the same with the Bible. It's just yeah. a book. Well, you know, God says that but even... there okay, is... Prove there's God. Yeah, I mean... How do you know what's God, what God is saying unless you have some proof? Yeah. Are you, you believe, getting this from the you Bible? you that the, the world was made by chance? It was just a random happening? Why couldn't it have been? Why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, scientifically, the... the, the now, well, what do you know scientifically? What, what so, sort of... You, you just said you're not a scientist, so how are you qualified to say scientifically this, that, or the other can happen? But you're asking me to give you scientific proof. I'm asking, asking you to give me that. any proof. Just, so just give me direct evidence. Then. Just give me scientists? any sort of direct evidence for the claims. This is what we're trying to say. Look, you can tell us all the time that God wants us to do this. God loves us. God, you know, and there are thousands of religions all around the world who have their holy books and their divine beings that they worship and they think that it is all a good idea if we choose their holy book and their divine being. And all and all we are here are we are the guys who are saying, yes, we're skeptical. We want to see good hard evidence. We're not inclined to take things on faith. So, so when you, so do you believe it, in evolution then? No, I don't believe in evolution. Evolution is a scientific principle. Science doesn't evolution require Evolution takes more belief. faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe that's in... That's because you're uneducated in the subject yeah. and you don't know any better. No, evolution that's not true. Evolution has 150 you know years of rock-solid evidence. You just evidence. slammed the guest. I haven't slammed you guys. No. You just... You just I stated a fact. I stated a fact. You made a statement that was an ignorant statement. You said evolution takes more faith to believe it in does. than God. Okay. There's no scientific and the reason you said, and, and you're also saying there's no scientific evidence for evolution. The reason you're saying those things is because you are uneducated in the subject of evolution. If you were educated in the subject of evolution, you would know those statements are false. So when I tell you that you're uneducated in the subject of evolution, I'm not slamming you. So I am are you stating a fact. In the subject of evolution? I am stating a fact. I'm a are lot more educated, educated in it than in the you are. Of evolution? I'm a lot more than you are, it would appear okay, to be. Okay, well, well, tell me what your scientific criteria is in your background in evolution science. Do you have a, a degree in, in evolution science? Then? I don't know. Okay, so what, are you just calling me an idiot on TV because it's your show? I'm calling you an idiot on TV because you made a, a statement that was no, actually it untrue. It takes a, look, there's no science. You made evidence okay. for okay. evolution. And you're wrong. You did not call me yeah. an idiot. And you're Here's wrong, and I didn't works. call you an idiot. And I never called you an idiot. I said you were uneducated in the subject of evolution. And I didn't call you an idiot, so don't put words in my mouth. You make statements that are factually incorrect. I'm going to call you on those statements. Yeah. Okay? Well, let me let me just say this with you, and I know that uh, probably other people, but uh, God all you got to do is pick up a book. The God that you, know, that you don't believe 
says a fool says in the heart, in his heart there is no God. Big deal. It's a and I book. challenge you guys to open up your hearts to the truth. It's a I don't book. want to you guys I, end your lives not knowing. That is an emotional appeal. Yeah. Okay, it's a logical fallacy. It's an emotional appeal. Give me the evidence. Okay, yeah. give me the evidence for this invisible man. Okay, that you say there is so much more of than you know this massive fossil record, this massive you know all of these DNA studies. Okay, 150 years of biology. You know, tens of thousands of you know millions of years of a fossil record of um, paleontology, archaeology. Okay that back up what we understand about how biodiversity works, about how genetic um, drift happens, about how gene frequencies and populations change a population over time. We have evidence for all these things, quite a lot of it. Just give me one shred of evidence that is as good as any of that evidence for your invisible friend, and I will care whether or not your invisible friend calls me a fool. I'll tell you what I'll do. There's a, there's a, a scientist named Dr. Carl Baugh. Carl Baugh? Carl Baugh. Oh, man. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not trying to be rude. You don't uh, respect Carl Baugh, but I'll send you um, literature that he's written yes, about yeah. the, uh, uh -huh. and the uh, is this peer reviewed of, of uh -huh. uh, creation. Is this, is this peer-reviewed literature? Did this appear in a peer-reviewed journal? I have no idea what a peer-reviewed journal is. Okay. Yeah. A peer-reviewed peer review, okay, is how science works. Are you talking right? about whether... Uh, other uh, scientists have reviewed it and agreed with it? Yes, yeah. that's, how, that's how peer review works. That is how scientific theories are determined to be accurate. Whether or not other people in that field of science can take an experiment that one man has said, I've conducted this experiment and I get these results. Now, if other scientists are able to conduct the same experiments and get the same results, that is able to validate the theory. On the other hand, if other scientists do the same experiment and they don't get the same results, then the theory is called into question and then more study needs to be done. So uh, I want to know if Carl Baugh has submitted any of his literature for peer review, you know, okay, with, so his, what, with so his mail order PhD. You, uh, number one, you're laughing at Carl Baugh's name. Yeah, because so, he's a uh, fraud. He's got a mail order PhD. You don't respect him, do you? No, I don't respect him. No, when I actually see him on TV talking about the reality, the very possible reality of the Flintstones cartoons, a little bit of respect goes down a notch or two on that one. Yeah. Well, I haven't so, heard that, sir. Yeah, I, he, uh, he was inter he was interviewed on the Daily Show where he was show he in his museum he shows Flintstones cartoons with Barney like using dinosaur having dinosaur pets, and he says this is very plausible. He actually said this on this interview. Yeah. He thinks that human beings and dinosaurs coexisted. This exactly. is false. It's just wrong. I mean, the man's ideas are loopy. He's a crackpot. Okay, so I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, it, it's just. His ideas aren't valid, He's, so he isn't really worthy of being taken seriously or respected in that regard. You know, now, if you want to bring up a guy like William Dembski, okay, now here's a man who does have legitimate scientific yep. credentials. Okay, unlike, unlike Carl Baugh, his PhD is legitimate. It didn't come from a mail-order degree mill. Unlike Carl Baugh, he has published peer-reviewed papers, but it's in his field mathematics. Now, he is a legitimate scientist, and, doc and people take Dr. Dembski seriously in many ways. However, he does have criticisms of the way he tries to use his mathematical theories and apply them to biology and make an argument for intelligent design in that way. So, but, so that's a guy who is at least a little bit more serious than Carl Baugh in terms of arguing that point. But the fact is, most of Dr. Dembski's colleagues don't agree with him. But at least, you know, he, he is a guy who has more respectable scientific credentials. Is well, it? for what so. it's worth, I'll be praying for you guys. God bless you. Knock, your, knock yourself out, man. <laughs> Look, we're not here to be disrespectful to anyone, okay? But... When you call our show, we do play hardball. If you're going to come here and make and, and, and make factually inaccurate statements, we'll call you on it. Okay. If you're going to say something like "there's no evidence for evolution," get real. I mean, <laughs> you don't I mean, you don't know what any, you're talking about. Any first year biology student that will tell you that's not true. So. Yeah. I mean, that just you know, saying that there's no scientific evidence for evolution is just like saying you know, um, yeah. uh, there's you know, uh, there's no uh, like the, the sky is bright green. Yeah. With, pol with purple polka dots. Yeah. It's just a factually inaccurate statement. I mean, you can look outside, yeah. you can find out for yourself. No, that's not true. Amongst actual scientists who actually mm -hmm. study this, and pretty much any real scientist, mm -hmm. uh, evolution is about as real as gravity, and yeah. the two have quite a few similarities. Uh, we both know they exist. We know evolution mm -hmm. happened, period. Gravity happens, period. Now, the exact mechanics behind it, mm -hmm. that we're not sure of. Yeah. There's a lot of theories about what gravity actually that was is. A great call. We don't know. 
Uh, just to, and just so, remember, okay. Same now, thing with evolution. I know that we we chuckled a lot at what that guy says. It's just because it, it amazes us that in this day and age, there are still people who try to bring up things like the the you know. They found Noah's Ark. Exactly. Or the Shroud of Turin is real yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. When, when all of this stuff has been long, or, or even the Bible Code, you'll get some people arguing for that. When all this stuff has been long since debunked, okay? And we can't help laughing at that simply because it's like, oh, no, not this again, you know? Um, but just to keep in mind, okay, I mean, the, call, the last caller, you know, he was trying to make, he, he was trying to, uh, you know, claim that we were just sitting there insulting him and, and, you know, I was calling him an idiot, which I never called him. I said he was uneducated in biology, yeah. which is true. If, if, if you're out there saying things yeah. like, Evolution has no evidence. That means you're, unedu you're, you're uneducated in the field. Yeah. So, um, you know, but I never called him an idiot. And remember, he started his call from the premise oh, of, by you calling know, us yes, fools. Psalms 14, you know, 14, <laughs> one, you know, the fool says in his heart, he is no, there is no God. And then he worked his way from there. Right. Yeah. So, so it was, it was a rather bit hypocritical of him to be sitting there saying, well, you guys are, you know, calling me names and da, 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 da. When his, he started his entire spiel. With that quote, yeah. as if that quote means anything. Okay, fine. If we're foolish for not believing in God, prove God exists. Yeah. Should be easy. Okay, that was great. Uh, fun <laughs> rant. Okay, Ryan is on too. He's been holding patiently. And we're not going to get to everybody, so uh, remember that uh, email address. Hey, you're on hold. I mean, you're not on hold. You're on the air. <laughs> hey, guys. How y'all doing? We're doing very well. What's up? Hey, good. Hey, I wanted to first thank you guys for, uh, seems like you guys, uh, like you expose a lot of the hypocrisy and uh, pretension, and a lot of the falsehoods that are propagated in the church, mm. you know, and uh, a lot of these false teachers that are out there. And uh, so, I want to thank you for that. Well, yeah. um, you know, again, we think that it, it should be up to um, when you have when you have demagogues like Roy Moore, the people that guys like that need to hear from are are other Christians. Um, we do get a lot of calls on this show from from people who are believers saying, you know, well, don't let me in with those guys because I don't I don't think the way they think. And I'm like, well, right. fine. But what we want, what we want to see is is the more liberal Christians, the more tolerant Christians, grow a backbone and stand up to the Ashcrofts and the Moors and the right followers. on, yeah. And that's a, I think that's a, that's a big deal. You know, a lot of people are so used to following these leaders, you know, mm -hmm. and they just uh, get in there and and follow blindly just whatever people are saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was wondering, well, my actual question that I called about, I was wondering what y'all's definition of God is. Like, how do you define this God that you don't believe in? Okay. Well, uh, that's interesting. And uh, I try not to make it my business to define God. Uh, I can only, when I say I don't believe in God, that's, that's a reaction. That's a reactionary statement, right? right. Uh, and what I'm reacting to, I can only react to the definition of God that I get from a believer, Okay. Now, you can have a believer sort of hem and haw and not really give you a definition or, or say, you right. know, like, like our, our previous caller, but you can, generally speaking, as, as I understand, you know, the, as I understand it, most people, at least in the West, they have this idea of God as being this supernatural entity who does magic stuff and he is deeply concerned with your day-to-day -day life. And um, if you pray to him, he'll grant you favors and things like that. Uh -huh. And since I see zilch evidence for any sort of a being of that nature, of course, then I don't believe in him. Um, I could very easily encounter a guy who was, say, a sun worshiper. You know, he could, he, just someone who worships the sun. You see, and there it is. And that's my God. You know, uh -huh. he could, and I could even explain to him, you know, that's not really a divine being. That's just a big ball of, you know, hydrogen and helium gas, and it's on fire, and it's just a star. And, and, and the guy could say, yeah, you know, I understand that, but still, I worship the sun. The sun is my God. Okay, well, I would have to say I believe in that, in his God. I mean, it exists. It's up there. I can see it. It's down there. It's casting warmth on us. I might disagree with him that it's godly in any way, but at least the thing that he calls God exists. Right. So, but I don't think that that is what the overwhelming majority of people who believe in God mean when they talk about the God they believe in. I think ult ultimately what most believers want to believe in is this sort of enhanced human. It's yeah. this idealized image of, of, of themselves. And this is, uh, or not necessarily themselves, but what they think a human being should be. Yeah. You know, just in terms of, you know... Uh, you know, the, the goodness that you want to aspire towards and what have you. And, and, and that this being can, can, you can entreat this being for favors. You can say prayers to the being. Right, kind of this, like a cosmic slot yeah. machine of sorts. Any love, yeah. Or, or, or more like a, uh, that in that, you know, sort of like a, a, a cross between a cosmic slot machine and just a big cosmic dad. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. just he loves you. He loves you unless you yeah, don't love him. Yeah, which is endearing. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, unless, yeah. You don't, unless you don't love him back, in which case you go to hell, which is not very endearing. But... But, uh, and, but of course, not everyone, you know, takes that part of the belief seriously. But still, it's, it's 
generally speaking, all I can do is respond to what believers, you know, when I say, okay, tell me about your God, give me the evidence for this God and give me a reason to believe in it. I can only react to what they're giving me, and, and I have so far not been given reasons to believe. Well, that's a, from that, what I hear, so you guys, you guys are scientific guys, it sounds like, and familiar well, we with... Like to, we like to be like, rationalists. Right. Yeah. Well, well, you're familiar with the scientific method, mm -hmm. I'm sure, and that's yeah. testing the Hall hy null hypothesis, which, yeah. which yeah. tests no correlation. You know what? We are down to our last 30 and seconds, so it, why don't you... Uh, you can either call <laughs> us next Sunday or, or send us an email about this, and we'll... Uh, we'll uh, We'll wrap it up that way, okay? All right, guys. You well, take thanks. care. Thanks, thanks a lot. And again, we're sorry we didn't get to, to Derek, who was waiting. But again, that's why tv at community.org is our uh, viewer email address. <clears throat> All right, for TV feedback. So, uh, kind of a boisterous show today. Yes, we like him like lots that. Lots of fun. But theists, we, we don't, don't hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. See you next time. Reruns what? on Tuesday, 4.30.